Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the freezer drawer track. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now that we've disconnected to power, our next step will be to make sure that all the items in the freezer are removed. Then we're going to take out the freezer basket and remove the complete freezer door. And that will give us better access to do this repair. Now to remove the complete drawer front on this freezer, we're simply going to loosen up the screws on both top and bottom on both sides. These are typically a quarter inch hex head screw. Do the same on the opposite side. And then carefully lift up equally on both sides of that door. We'll remove the whole door assembly and just set that aside. Next, we'll just remove that basket to get that out of the way. So we can it up on it, pull it away from the frame and set it aside. Now as well, we'll want to remove these plastic covers on both sides. Simply release the little locking tabs while lifting up on them. And remove them. And set those aside. We'll also want to remove the upper basket and to do so you'll want to remove the screws that secure that upper track on both sides. Again these are quarter inch hex head screws. The screw removed, we're able to flex that track just enough to allow it to lift up on both sides. We're going to pull that basket completely forward. Now to release that basket completely from that track, we need to lift up on the covers on the rear as well. There's a couple of tabs that hold those in place. Now to release the rear drive wheels on that upper rack, we need to depress these two locking tabs on the end covers while pulling up on the cover itself. That will disengage the drive wheel from the track. So do the same on both sides. Now with both drive wheels released, next just going to flex the front of that rail enough that we can pull that rack out from underneath of it. Do the same on both sides. And then you lift that whole upper rack out and we'll set it aside. Now with the lower track pulled completely forward, we're next going to release this drive wheel on the left side. Just taking our flat blade screwdriver, going between the nylon drive gear and the metal track. And just pry that gear towards the center. Can then just lift up on it, pull it completely away from the right hand side, and we'll just set that aside. You can then push in on the left hand track, the right hand one. We're going to remove that whole track assembly from the refrigerator. To do so, we simply need to depress that tab at the back and then pull the whole rail assembly out and set it aside. Next we'll remove that top track completely. Again we're just going to flex that out 
at the front, tilt it away, and release the tab at the back. And just set that aside. Next, we'll remove the screws that secure that track to the side of the cabinet. Lift the old track away, discard it, we'll position the new one in place. And secure it with the screws. We can then put the upper track back in place. Start by inserting that tab in the opening at the back first, and then just pivot it into place, making sure that we line up the tab on the bottom with the slot on top of the lower rail. Now we're ready to put the complete track assembly back in place. Now when installing that rail assembly back into the freezer, we wanna make sure that that drive wheel is in the right position. You'll note that there are two flat spots on the gears of that drive wheel. We wanna make sure the very first tooth that is cut starts out in that first slot. So line up the track and rotate that gear so that the first one fits into that first notch. Make sure we push it all the way back in until that track locks into place. And then just check the alignment of those gears. And we'll take that off the basket. Make sure both end pieces are in the raised position. Next, we're going to tuck those corners in underneath the stops on those top rails. Now, once they're in behind that, you can just push that back out of the way. We'll lock those upper rails into place and secure them with the two screws. And pull that basket all the way forward so it meets the stops on both sides. Then we're simply going to press down on those covers at the back until they lock in place. Again, make sure it's pulled all the way forward, locking both sides, and then you can push that back out of the way. Now next, we're ready to put the support rod in with the left hand gear and again we'll note that that gear has two flat sides we want to make sure that we have that proper tooth in the front notch so be sure that both rails are fully extended Now, because that's a square shaft, it will only go in four different positions. So it's pretty easy to make sure that we have it lined up so that that first cut tooth fits into that first hole when the rail is fully extended. So line it up on the back and then press it into place. And check the operation. And now we're ready to install the rest of that lower basket. And next we need to put those side covers back on. We want to make sure that we line up these two hooks on the bottom into the respective slots on that metal bracket. And the top edge needs to sit over the top of that metal bracket. So engage the wheel and rod at the back 
and then just snap them down into place till the lock tabs hold them there. Do the same for both sides. You can then place the wire basket into those holders. And now we're ready to put the drawer front back on. So when installing that drawer front, we just need to make sure that we line up the two screws with the slots on the mounting brackets. It's easier to do one side at a time. Make sure all four screws are engaged and then tighten them. And just check the operation. And now we're ready to push the refrigerator back into place. Now we can push the refrigerator back into place, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.